Hello. It is Thursday, March 17th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Thursday puzzle today, of course, so we'll have some sort of interesting or intricate theme, and I can already see some circled cells, which I enjoy generally for some reason. Um, So that will relate to the theme, surely. We'll have to see how. Um, But first, let's thank a few people. I would like to thank a, uh, a brand new benefactor, Camtron, who actually they claim their name to be Camtron Bring Back Idle Thumbs. I'm dubious of that, but but uh, but thank you, Camtron, and thank you also to Laura Sexton, as well as, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. All three of them are benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, and thank you, Camtron, as well, for the very kind note you sent as you signed up. Um, so yes, thank you to them. They are directly supporting this channel and this series and making it a sustainable part of my daily work. And at that benefactor level, um, you can get access to the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, as well as, um, well, this recognition, clearly. And at any level on the Patreon, you can see all of the bonus solve videos that, that go up there each week, as well as the full uh, full panoply of those that have gone up to date. And I just put up last night the most recent New York Times um, acrostic puzzle. It was not my finest solve, I must say, so apologies if you find yourself watching that one, but it is an interesting, I really do enjoy those acrostics. It's such a different challenge to the crossword. And um, also last night solved the most recent boss words puzzle. I wish I could, wish I could have published that one instead of the, uh, the acrostic, because I actually did pretty well on the boss words. I did it under the par time and didn't make any mistakes, which was a huge relief to me, I must say. Um, But that won't go up until Saturday morning once the solution has already been uh, been posted. I don't want to to spoil it for the fine people at, at the Bosswords League. Anyway, uh, that's all up on the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash daily solve. And thank you to everybody who is backed at any level. Also, I always forget to say this at the beginning of the video, but do subscribe to the channel. That's that's free. If, you, uh, if you're enjoying this, I um, appreciate it greatly. Those who do, and tell a friend if you think you know someone who might like it. All right. So all of that said, let's get on to today's crossword. This is, of course, as I said, a Thursday puzzle. It was constructed by Daniel Bodley and Jeff Chen. Now, uh, Daniel Bodley is a debut constructor. So first, New York Times crossword. Jeff Chen is about as far from that as you can get. We've, in fact, I think just solved a Jeff Chen, another Jeff Chen collaboration. Jeff seems to collaborate relatively frequently with debut constructors, which is a nice, a nice thing. That's a nice service that he, that he um, apparently provides. And he has constructed well over a hundred New York Times puzzles, and is the proprietor of xwordinfo.com, which is a great source of a great resource um, for information about the his New York Times crossword going back through its entire history. Of course, this puzzle was edited, as always, by Will Schwartz, and that's all I have to say about that. So let's get started. Okay, something to click. It could be an icon on a computer desktop. Let's just. Let's stub it in and see if that works. Being pulled along. Well, yeah, that could be in tow. And a short-legged herding, a short-legged herding dog could be a corgi. So actually, I- Icon is looking pretty solid, I think. Now here we have astronomical news. Could be a nova, a star, a uh, celestial event, and an uncouth untruth. A nasty lie? totally misses or totally surveys. I wonder if this will be theme related. Not necessarily. I'm only saying that because of the ellipses, but it doesn't intersect with any circled cells. So maybe not. Uh, Anyway, over, totally misses. Overlooks. Yes. Yes. If you overlook something, you could survey it. But also if you overlook it, you could miss it entirely. Totally miss it or totally survey. So that's very clever. And Okay, this certainly is related to the theme. So the clue here is simply the word trick, but it has an asterisk, which is presumably going to be going to accompany each of the theme clues in this puzzle. And we see it's being referenced by the revealer, which says what to do before the answers to the starred clues will make sense. All right. So I am I think what that means is I'm not going to attempt to solve trick uh, right this moment. Um Sorry, I just got a message. Um, I mean, wily does mean tricky, 
but I'm not, I'm sorry. I just said I'm not going to do this, so I'm not. Having mucho dinero. Um, is it rico? Is that rich in Spanish? I'm not sure. I shouldn't. I shouldn't go out on that limb because I'll forget I did it and then give myself a problem. Well, unflinching, though, looks like stoic, so that might be correct. And here, disco dancing enthusiast on The Simpsons. Disco stew rings a bell to me, so I think that's correct. Select. Could be tap, maybe? As in tap somebody for a particular job. And boom times are ups. Yeah, the stock market could be booming, could be up. So take... It's the first part of the action we'll have to perform to the starred clues, but let's let's keep going for now. Watering hole in many westerns. A saloon. Suspect that means. And global manufacturer of chemical products. Now this I'm not really sure. If this were Rico, this would be Olin, which, I mean, honestly, it's about as plausible as any other vowel here to me. Uh, well, no, that's not true. I suppose E. No. Well. Actually, the other vowels don't look, they look less plausible than I thought they might, to be totally honest. So maybe it is an I. That does seem the most, that does look the most reasonable. But for now, we'll look elsewhere. Nail polish brand with an I'm not really a waitress shade. Um, that's clever, but I don't know what the answer is. Maybe I'll recognize it. I don't know. Pigeons on a platter. Um, uh, squabs. Yeah, you could have uh, squabs being, you know, a roasted chicken or maybe cooked on a spit. How's a squab prepared? Anyway, that's what that would be. Um, pigeons in a culinary sense. And wisecracks would be quips. Leave with no strings attached. Untie, perhaps? You untie the strings. So you, therefore you leave it with the strings no longer attached. And um, I should have pointed this out before filling it in, but there's a question mark. So that's an indicator of a pun or, or bit of wordplay. So we're, we have to read this not in, not in the way that would be most obvious. In other words, not in the idiomatic way that to a native English speaker would be the clearest. Leave with no strings attached, meaning leave with no um, responsibilities remaining. But here we actually read it more literally to solve the clue and, and, and uh, satisfy that question mark indicator. Term of address for many a respected elder. Could be auntie. You get that in many, many places and communities. Quarterback stat. Uh, attack. I don't know. Is that a statistic? <laughs> it relates to quarterbacks. I have no clue. I'm sorry. Uh, we'll have to keep going. Bitter feeling. Bitter feeling. And words repeated while scrolling through a Netflix list, perhaps. Oh, seen it, maybe. Yeah, I see. So you could be, you could have seen it, seen it, seen it, etc. Bitter feeling. What is that? Oh, bile. Yes. So metaphorically, you could be feeling of, of bile could be rising in you. This looks like little, doesn't it? This could be an R, and the circled spells. Circled cells would spell litter. I don't know what that means exactly. Secure. Oh, it probably is because blank to the bottom looks like race to the bottom to me. And give permission to could be enable somebody to do something. Some frozen drinks could be ices, which are blended frozen drinks. Voyager 1, for instance, is a probe. And blank trivia. Pub trivia. You could have a a pub trivia quiz, for instance. Makes as cakes as bakes. That rhymes. <laughs> Makes as cakes and bakes. Strand in a cell. Ah, it's our, it's our old friend RNA, which I really think... I haven't discussed cro crossword ease much recently. These words that... I mean, RNA isn't... I, it's, it's tough to say what the line between... What, what the line that, that delineates crossword ease is, because RNA is not... It's not a word like... Um, Oh, I don't know, like like the E words, like E-zine, that really only come up in the crossword. But it is a word that I would say disproportionately appears in the crossword relative to its use in ordinary speech, certainly. I mean, considerably more so. Um, although maybe less true in recent years because of our awareness of the mRNA vaccines. But anyway, my point is just that uh, there's a sort of 
collection of words that tend to come up in crosswords often enough that it's worth remembering them in particular. Aloe, the plant being another one, the acai berry, uh, ode, the type of poem, Oreo, the cookie, that, that sort of thing. And RNA really feels to me as though it's becoming one of those. It's particularly noticeable over the, over the last couple of years. Anyway, cry to end a pin. So you could, someone could have you pinned down and you could cry uncle to let them, uh, to, to signal them to release you, to signal your surrender. All right, so here we have Little Rock, Secure. All right, so we still don't know what to do to this because we've not yet filled out the revealer. Now, this is sort of surprising, though. Because this spell, the, the circled cells here spell a very obvious word, litter. In fact, I filled that R on that basis, I think. Or no, I didn't, but I was made more confident about it. Whereas here, this doesn't look like an obvious word to me. But, you know, and if we did put an R here, that would be even more strange. Yeah, I'm not sure yet. Nasty lie. That looks that looks correct. So so does saloon. Yeah, those all look right. What about this blank of sunset? Bravo series. No idea whatsoever. I assume this is a current or recent television program, but I'm not sure. What Graham Greene called a failure of imagination. Um. I'm not sure. Graham Greene, a great novelist, but I don't know this quote. Let's see. Galoot could be an ape. Oh, fate, perhaps? So that's sort of assuming, uh, is, the, is the implication there that um, not so much fate itself, but the but the assignment of the, the concept by, a, by humans reflects a failure of imagination. The idea that things are, are fated. That seems plausible. Requested pickup time on many online orders. ASAP, I suppose. And what was this? Something of sunset. A face. I don't know if this is a if this is fate. Um, what else could it be? I think it's probably fate. That does seem plausible to me, given the quotation. Company whose name derives from a term in the game of Go. Oh, uh, Atari. I think. I think I saw this the other day because of the because the Atari logo. The Fuji, as it's sometimes called, was referred to in the crossword. And I think in someone's comment, maybe it was the origin of the name coming from the game Go, which a game with which I'm basically unfamiliar, unfortunately, was mentioned. Let's see. Let's keep going. Farm outbuilding. Um, a sty? A pigsty? Voting, but it doesn't look right. Um, farm outbuilding. Why don't I not see what that is? Voting block. And here we have incense, in a sense. Um, so to anger somebody, to stir, stir things up. Not sure. Oh, blank attack, card game variant. Uh, I don't think I've heard of this, but I'm guessing Uno, purely based on the fact that it's three letters and honestly, as well, because attack is capitalized and that may, and it sounds, it just sounds like a commercial term. It doesn't sound like a sort of, it doesn't sound like a traditional card game. I can't imagine poker attack, for instance. I know it's not the correct number of letters, but just in terms of the train of thought I was on, something like poker attack doesn't, it just doesn't go. This sounds like something that would be named by a corporation and then marketed in a store as opposed to something that would be part of a traditional non-branded card game. So that's why that in the three letters was why I guess it's, you know, but I could be wrong about all of that because this voting block doesn't look very uh, helpful, but I'm, I must just be missing it. Voting block. Oh, oh, I see. It's not a demographic voting block. It's a voting, voting block in terms of the the outcome of the vote. So it's the nays, as in the yeas and the nays. I see. And so a farm outbuilding could indeed be a sty. Okay. That this all looks this all looks fine. And blank of sunset. I'm just not going to know that. I'm going to keep going. Uncommon bills. Well, in the US, two dollar bills are quite uncommon. Twos, I would say. 
didn't wax say? Well, if the moon didn't wax, it could wane. It could be on the, on the wane instead of wax, you know, instead of, I don't know, appearing to enlarge, it could be appearing to, to shrink. Application could be a use of something. Many a prof has one. Many a prof is a PhD, uh, doctorate of philosophy. How's it going? Sup, you might say. What's up? Popular site for online for no for holiday gift orders. Brain weirdly inserted the online, which is uh, intrinsic to the site bit. Popular site for holiday gift orders. Um, is there a Santa's related site to something? I'm guessing that purely based on the crosses, but I doesn't ring a bell. What about this? Oh, right. Here's a revealer. Take some. Th- what to do to the answers before the starred clues will make sense. Take out the trash. Okay. <laughs> Take out the trash. So what does that mean? Oh, right. So secure is to lock. Oh, and trash is litter. Yes, there we go. Okay, so I must have something wrong here. Trick. Well, a trick, well, okay, well, we already have that part in, actually, because a trick could be a while, um, as in wily coyote is named as such, because to be wily is to be tricky. Um, and a, a trick or a, a tricky uh, sort of skill could be a, a while. You don't really, we don't really use that way. That Maybe that was more commonly used that way historically. It certainly isn't as commonly used that way in the singular now, but but that is what that means. Um Right. So, so what, what did I do wrong? I feel as though I must've done something wrong. Um, boy, I just don't know what this is. Could this be Shaw's of sunset? Oh, hate is a failure of imagination. That is a, that is an extremely plausible answer. That that's, that's an easier thing to justify than what I was doing with fate. Although I think you could I think you could make a case for the fate thing, but hate seems like a better match. And so it, could this possibly be Shaw's? What, what does that mean? Shaw's of sunset? I'm not sure. Um, so this looks like dross to me. Dross would be rubbish. But, but the Y would obviously be incorrect. So if that were dross, then, oh, I misspelled, oh, oh, I never even looked at this. No, I just, oh, I see. It's not that I made a typo with monstrous sort being ogre. I never even looked at ogre. I filled in nasty lie and never reconsidered it. So this looks like tray in French, but it's not, it's not, not that at all. Um, it's a serious schlep, which would be a trek. The down clue, uncouth, untruth is a naked lie, not a nasty lie. And well, it's, it's that in this case anyway. And a monstrous sort is an ogre. There we go. Sorry about that. I really gave myself much more of a difficult time than I needed to. All right. So then we have wild roses. And when we remove the dross from the wild roses, we get a while, a trick. And when we remove the litter from Little Rock, we get a lock, which is secure. Okay, great. This all makes sense now. I'm sorry for that, that lapse. Okay. Senate Majority Leader from 1996 to 2001 looks like Trent Lott to me. And that would be, that'd probably be fairly obscure if you're not from the United States, I would think. Um, Some hairstyles in punk fashion. Rat tails? Um, And words that may scare off a buyer, as is, perhaps. Afflictions could be ills, could be suffering from various ills. Get on board could be to load or to laid... Uh, what about this popular site for online gift orders santa's something not sure santa's yeah optometrists offering casually could be specs maybe the casual casual bit meaning using that x to pluralize it Uh, well to to shorten spectacles to specs and then further more even more casually to use that X. That's my guess. An optometrist would could sell you glasses, spectacles. Uh, and one of England's so-called home counties would be Essex. The, um, the home counties are the um, the counties surrounding greater London. Um, so uh, Hertfordshire and Buckinghamshire and 
Essex and those places. Um, what a jalapeno has that habanero lacks? Uh, oh, a tilde. <laughs> so it's not referring to the it's not referring to the actual peppers. It's only referring to their names. And the jalapeno has the tilde above the end there. So, uh, so I guess it would be jalapeno and habanero. Is that correct, or is it still habanero? I don't know. Sorry. Again, Spanish pronunciation not so good. Habanero, I assume. Okay. Anyway, uh, here we have a speck. And it looks like dust is going to be the trash that we take out, perhaps. Does that work? Um, no, it's not. It'll be... Oh, sorry. I didn't notice the circled E at the end. It'll be waste. Waste. And then iota would be a speck, and that spells Iowa State. All right, there we go. So Iowa State, we remove the waste, and we're left with an, an iota, a speck. Oh, in, oh, <laughs> it's not incense in a sense. It's not to anger somebody. It's incense in a sense, or an odor. Incense meaning the fragrant, you know, a fragrant substance, a fragrance, an odor that, that I guess it, that, that, that's a, that emits from the thing that you burn. Okay, blank O's. Oh, <laughs> is this Oreo O's? Actually, after mentioning... <clears throat> After mentioning Oreo earlier in this very video as a bit of crossword ease, which it certainly is, and I think that I think that's that might be the case here. I'll wait. I'll wait until we have some crosses to be fully confident about that. Um, wait. Speaking of waiting, this says wait, don't go. And here, like men's double-breasted suits, e.g., I mean, arguably they're retro, um, in the sense that a single-breasted suit is certainly much more common these days. Uh, destination of the first marathon, 490 BC, Athens. Um, and a certain Pan-Africanist informally could be a Rasta, Rastafarian. Air up there, the ether, up there in the ether. So Oreo does look correct. So one of the things about Oreo is that it is such a longstanding and legendary bit of crossword ease that I believe Will Shorts mandates that in order to use it in the crossword, you must provide a unique clue. And if so, that makes that sort of surprising to me that if there's a product called Oreo O's, which I assume there must be, that this would have been the first time it was used. But I, I do remember we had, there was one within the last few weeks that was something like, or maybe last few months maybe, that was something about the calorie count, the specific calorie count of an Oreo, which really shows how far they have to stretch to find new clues to get this, this old, old chestnut in there again. Okay, flip flop could be a thong, uh, which is not called as such everywhere, but that would be a sandal, um, simple, simple sort of beach sandal, flip flop thong, and riot. Oh well, <laughs> we already have the we are we already have this sort of prepared answer here, which is hoot. Something's a total riot. It's a total hoot, and. What about this? Boat that's good in shallow water. A scow? Blank manual. Owner's manual, looks right. The hair of one's chinny chin chin, maybe. A goatee, I suppose. It's a chin, small chin beard. A keynote, e.g. Well, so generally speaking, keynote is a noun, but it if you deliver a keynote address, you could be said to keynote, I suppose, to orate, to deliver a keynote address, to, to deliver some oration. Car part that moves rhythmically. Car part that moves rhythmically. I would think the pistons in an internal combustion engine, what, moves, what else moves rhythmically in a car? I mean, there aren't very many options. It really looks like water, but I don't see how that could possibly be correct. What about this? Expires, lapses. Something expires, it lapses. And here we have rip-roaring, so a phrase. And oh, a wiper, a windshield wiper, of course, sorry. Oh, and here we have shoot craps, and we will have removed the scraps from shoot craps in order to make hoots. Hoot. So I think we have only a single letter left. Is that right? Santa's lap. Oh, Sorry. Good fitting ending. Something 
I completely misinterpreted. It's not a popular website for holiday gift orders, but that's a very clever bit of misdirection on the part of the constructors. It's a popular site, meaning a popular physical location for holiday gift orders, Santa's lap, sitting in Santa's lap. And to get on board, it is, okay, it is delayed. So I was actually, I was right to be, um, I was right to be um, unsure about which, which way this would go. And there it is. So today, certainly, in, in the various uh, categories of theme that include the sorts of themes that don't need anything to be solved, they just tie some things together, to the sorts of themes that do need something to be solved in order for them to make any sense, this was obviously more towards that end of the spectrum. We, we as, as the revealer, which in this case was in the center of the grid, the revealer being the answer and associated clue that explain what's going on with the theme elsewhere in the puzzle. Um, in in the central location, which would be the second most common location for it after this general region down here. Um, and we did need that. We did need that for this all to make sense, to take out the trash. So we took out the litter from Little Rock to make a lock secure. We took out the dross from Wild Roses to make a while, a trick. We took out the waste from Iowa State to make an iota, a speck. And we took out the scraps from uh, shoot craps to make a hoot, a riot. And there we have it. So a nice, tidy theme, and it had some circled cells, which which I always enjoy. Uh, was there anything else that was particularly difficult? I think Trent Lott would have been a tough get for a lot of people, I suspect. Um, what else? What else? Laid isn't the most common word. I mean, we... This is another case where we use a derived form of it much more commonly than the root. So we would say laden much more often than we would use laid as a verb. But it's still, still around, still exists. Um, oh, you know, I never looked at this. The nail polish brand, Opie. Okay, I didn't, I don't, I actually don't recognize that. Sometimes I, sometimes I recognize that, recognize these things once they're actually filled in the grid. But in this case, I don't. I also don't think I know I don't think I'm familiar with Olin, the global manufacturer of chemical products, so I'll have to look that up as well. Um, but otherwise, I don't think it was a brutally difficult Thursday as far as these things go. Um, let me know. Let me know how you how you fared with that, with the theme or the puzzle more broadly. Uh, yeah, it was one of those themes that that is very straightforward once you once you get it, but it's just utterly baffling early on. And I didn't do myself any favors there because of this um, nasty lie naked lie situation. That was, that was a bit, that was a bit, um, presumptuous of me. I think what, it, I think I, because I matched two of these letters, I maybe assumed, well, it must be, it must be that nasty lie. And the lie was fitting. So I never really thought that's why I should always be sure to check the crosses, just like it says on the mug that, that, uh, benefactors of the daily self Patreon campaign receive. I really should check the crosses even once it feels like something has been pretty secure. That would have helped me out there. You shaved probably a minute or so off my time. Who knows? Anyway, um, that's that. That was the Thursday puzzle. So why don't we take a look at some clues from yesterday's puzzle, the, uh, the Wednesday. What do we have? We have from Bradley, the Tampa Bay Pro Ray, which was the fill in yesterday's puzzle, um, answering the Tampa Bay Pro, refers to the Major League Baseball team. The Tampa Bay Devil Rays became a new team in 1998 with a mantra ray as their primary logo and mascot. In 2008, under new ownership, they dropped the word devil from their name and changed their primary logo to a ray of sunshine. Oh. Though they still occasionally display a manta ray as a secondary logo. I wonder what the thinking was. What an interesting change. I wonder why. The Tampa Bay Rays have had much more success than they did as the Devil Rays, who were co consistently one of the worst teams in baseball. Oof. And um, Caleb Alberton uh, explains, Raphael, the red masked Ninja Turtle, okay, so there's some knowledge for me, has got, quote, has got the most attitude on the team and wields Psy. So that was the SAI, that was SAI, which was the answer in yesterday's uh, grid. A three-pronged weapon often mistaken for a dagger. It does not traditionally have a sharpened edge or point, instead being used to deflect and trap weapons. Marvel Comics Electra and Mortal Kombat's Melina also use Psy. All right. 
Well, good to know. And Ben Ward says he's cool, but rude. <laughs> Fair enough. And James Draper says, a couple of minor points. When you asked if a one shot is a phrase, I think in this context, it was intended to be read along the lines of, we only have one shot at this, i.e. just one chance. Also, you later mentioned the duo, so the, the clue that pertained to the answer duo, could be anything, and that it may as well be two ducks, which I'm assuming was just a slip of the tongue. Even though you've apparently never seen the Ninja Turtles, I assume your cartoon knowledge at least extends to knowing that Bugs Bunny is a rabbit. Yes, okay, so indeed it does. I am familiar with Bugs Bunny. I was very confused by this by this comment, so I had to go back to the to the crossword and understand what, what uh, James was talking about, and the clue referred to Bugs and Daffy, and for some reason... I just didn't, I mean, genuinely, even after reading this comment and looking back at the puzzle, I still was thinking, well, those, those must be, those must be two ducks. What does he, what does he mean? No, of course it's, of course it's Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny. And I, I, I don't know what I was thinking. So that was just, indeed, that was a silly, um, just complete, uh, brain failure on my part. Uh, I am, I have heard of, Bugs Bunny. Not only not only have I heard of Bugs Bunny, I've seen many Bugs Bunny cartoons in my life. So, uh, I, yeah, it happens. Anyway, that's that for the crossword, and um, I'll be back tomorrow for the Friday. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thanks again to everybody who is back the Patreon campaign. And if you did enjoy this, please do subscribe to the to the to the um, channel and like the videos. Why not? Uh, if, unless you don't like them, in which case you can just move right along. Um, but thank you to everybody who has done any of those things and ever recommended them or left comments. I do read every single comment. Um, so I do enjoy those as well. Um, even the ones I don't read on the, the channel I read. So thank you to everybody who has joined me today. I hope you do that again tomorrow on Friday for um, our first themeless puzzle of the week. The first of two themeless puzzles should be a little trickier than this one in terms of the cluing anyway. Obviously no theme. So join me for that. Uh, and until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Mm -hmm.